Welcome back to the C-Space studio here at CES 2023. I am James Kotecki. Joining me right now, Steve Bagdasarian, Chief Commercial Officer, Comscore. Thanks so much for coming back to the C-Space studio. Well, thanks for having me. So we chatted uh, last year, of course, but I always like to have people at the beginning of the year at CES kind of define what the brand means right now. So how yeah. do you frame up what Comscore is all about? Yeah, look, I, I think we have a, a pretty clear line of sight um, based upon the realities of what's happening in the market. If, if we're not at you know peak cross-platform consumer consumption, it's definitely near peak. And so I, I think the big theme for us as we look at the year, CES is a wonderful place to kick that off out of the gate is to, to really focus on you know, how do we help advertisers? How do we service the marketers to be able to reach all audiences across all screens? Mm -hmm. So um, peak cross-platform consumption, can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, so, you know, much like for those that have been in the industry for a long time, if they recall back to the years of mobile, I feel like we've been in the years of, of cross-media. You know, the, uh, the, the currency discussions are becoming more meaningful, but the cross-platform usage and, and experiential nature of how media is being consumed, right, as it relates to linear, to digital, the, the use yeah. of social, the, the use of mobile mm -hmm. as it relates to all these, all of those present opportunities for advertisers to be able to, mm -hmm. to get a deeper impact with their advertising strategies to consumers. Yeah. We're looking at that behavior as, you know, kind of the, the, the key area for us to focus on and support uh, and ultimately uh, be able to, to connect some dots. Is there an app metaphor here that there's like, there's, there's gaps, there's bridges, and somehow in those, in those gaps, in those spaces between all the things that are crossing over, there's opportunities to find if you can do it, but it's very challenging to do that sometimes. Massively, so you, know, you have to think about this in the sense of, it's not linear good and everything else bad or vice versa. Every, every channel has its particular purpose, but the reality is, as an industry, just based on you know, where technology and where data sets ultimately have derived, things have been very siloed. Uh, there's an opportunity to bridge that, and there's an opportunity to make these channels work cohesively um, to ultimately drive better return on ad spend. So paint me a picture of the ideal vision for an advertiser. If, if, if everything worked as it actually should, and maybe the things that you're working on are hopefully going to enable this, I'm not sure how long it's going to take to get there. You can choose any time horizon you want. But paint me a picture of the future that you're really hoping to go towards. Yeah, look, I think the future reality is, is, is now, right? Th this is all possible and doable, and, and that's where we see our value add uh, to be able to service the industry in this capacity. If you think about it, an advertiser you know, spends a national advertising campaign on television, they're going to naturally underperform. The ability for them to be able to optimize mm -hmm. the nonlinear channels in conjunction yeah. with the in-flight performance of their linear stations allow for this opportunity to be able to maximize true reach. Maximizing true reach ultimately becomes the most Im important input that goes mm -hmm. into the performance marketing equation, yeah. which at the end of the day is the ride with outcomes. From the consumer perspective, they probably don't even think about the idea of it being cross-channel or, or any of these different things being anything separate from just their overall experience of using media and, or maybe just seeing screens, right? So, so from the consumer perspective, I don't want to dumb it down too much, but it's all screens to them, right? And they, 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 so from their perspective, it should already be that way. It, it, 100%. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact is, is that to them, it's just media, yeah. right? However I consume it, however I want to consume it, I, I expect to have a, a relevant and a cohesive experience. Therefore, the ads that are ultimately powering a lot of that consumption opportunity yeah. need to also be able to fall in line with the expectations mm -hmm. of how people want to consume uh, information. Yeah. So how do you do this in a way that everybody trusts what's going on? Um, I know that trust is a big important part yeah. of what's going on at Comscore. So tell me about what that means to you and how you're making that happen. Yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, our role as a third-party measurement company is to provide that independence, right, around verification and validation that, uh, you know, the, the ad spend was correct, the audiences that were, were delivered against mm -hmm. were accurate, um, and that the, you know, the outcome opportunities were, uh, were true. Um, so for us, we, we, we take the third party independence and the role that measurement needs to play in this space as you know, the, the critical role that, that mm -hmm. Comscore needs to continue to facilitate. Uh, and frankly, that's why we support accreditation. Mm -hmm. uh, we support the, the opportunity for you know, um, you know, open looks at our methodologies and so forth. Mm -hmm. But that trust factor comes down to the role that we have to embody as an organization and the services that we supply to the market. Um, do you feel like, even if you're able to provide all those elements of trust, do you feel like the market or the industry has been in a position where there hasn't been as much trust as there should be, and people kind of need to catch up to the reality of where you are, where the technology is, of what's possible. Is there still some mistrust, in other words, that you're trying to quash? I think it's, I think sometimes trust and confusion are two things that ultimately mm -hmm. coincide with each other. Um, look, at the end of the day, this is a complicated industry, uh, and, and the role of measurement mm -hmm. in this industry is gonna be complicated no matter what. 
you know, but the, the opportunity to be transparent with uh, how our methodologies are built, the data assets mm -hmm. by which we are, are leveraging, the systems and the architecture of our technology, all of those things need to be visible yep. back to a, an audit-based opportunity to be able to really build that, uh, yep. that trust by de uh, demystifying the confusion around how measurement ultimately is derived in the space. We are here at C-Space. I understand you gave a presentation with Google and the NFL. How did that go? What was that about? Yeah, so the, the, the premise of, of that particular uh, conversation was really predicated on uh, two things. One, the role of uh, and power that it, you can get from the incrementality of uh, more streaming orientation into your strategies. Mm -hmm. And then also, too, just the, the these major tentpole events that are tied to sports, like the Super Bowl. Yep, coming uh, here to Las Vegas. A, coming to Las Vegas in a few weeks are massively, massively important aspects to be able to think differently about your deliverability of your, your ad-based strategy and your, your uh, mm -hmm. consumer engagement opportunities. What we, what we know uh, coming out of this is, you know, when you look at the younger demographics of Gen Z, um, of the consumers that, that viewed the Super Bowl on YouTube, right, 60% of them did not see ads on linear, right? That was truly incremental reach back to the end advertiser. On the flip side, what we're seeing and what the NFL did a fantastic job articulating is that this is no longer, uh, ten these temple events are no longer just about the event. It's about the build up. It's about the event. It's about right. the post. It's well, a it's a tent pole, and then there's a tent correct, correct. Would be on the tent pole. Right? And, and, and we're getting into this phase now with these major events about being these leaned in experiences, which require a whole different methodology. Cross platform is yeah. not about the deliverability of one mm -hmm. asset across a multitude of different mm -hmm. experiences or screens. Yeah. It's about actually looking at the consumer behavior and being able mm -hmm. to capitalize on it in the best integrated way possible. I think uh, yeah, there could be a brand or a marketer listening to this and think that sounds exhausting. That sounds like a way more work than I was even thinking it would be, and I already thought it would be a lot of work. Is that really what it's going to take? Is like more people, more brains, more more technology, more firepower on all this stuff? Because if you think about beyond the yeah, tent pole yeah. to a tent and, and you know, it's, mo it's more days, it's more content, it's more everything. That's challenging. It, look, it is challenging, but you know, there's also massive opportunity in every challenge, right? Uh, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that you have so many different components here that allow for you to think about the beyond, right? Yeah. The, the 365 day engagement that I need to be able to drive with my consumer mm -hmm. to help bolster opportunity. Yeah. Um, and that's really what these things need to represent. So look, there's hard things that we have to deal with in our business, mm -hmm. but tremendous opportunity on the other yeah. side to be able to capture attention and brand loyalty. Are you seeing AI tackle some of those hard things in new ways? There's a lot of talk about AI tackling those things. I think there's a lot of promise of where it can step into. I mean, look, I, I think where, where AI has been put you know, uh, to use in, in the best case, there's a lot of promise with Gen AI as it relates to creative to help alleviate some of these, yeah. these challenges as it relates to the experiential or kind of the, the, the multi-touch aspects of how you think about engaging in all of these different facets around certain events or over the course of a calendar year. Um, you know, we utilize J, uh, you know, AI services as it relates to uh, our, our, our audience and segmentation business. So there is a lot of promise that I'm starting to see build in that capacity. But the promise of AI has to be able to reduce the workload that ultimately is going to be able to drive the best uh, the best program here. Yeah, um, can we talk about gaming for a second? Oh, are, absolutely. Are you, are, you, are you measuring gaming? Are you in gaming? And what are you thinking about for 2024? Gaming is a huge, huge, huge opportunity for marketers. Uh, it's it's a personal passion point as well as a core focus for Comscore. Um, you know, in a few weeks we're going to release our, our updated state of the gaming report. We've been looking at this space for over a decade. What I think gaming represents is this beautiful white space of, of consumer engagement, right? You have users that are in a logged in state, highly attentive and engaged. You have fantastic integration opportunities. You have users that are transacting in those environments. Yeah. It is a natural extension that is underappreciated at this phase within the marketing strategy uh, as we think about you know, all of those different kind of cross-screen opportunities. Um, and I think we're going to see a rise of it. And, yeah. and frankly, it's becoming more of a topic but I don't think it's as appreciated as it needs to be at this point. What's been the impediment there? Because obviously the, the things that you're mentioning, maybe they're more true now, but they certainly have been true in, in years past. So what is what is changing there? Or what's, what is the thing that needs to still be unlocked for people to get it? Or, or is, are they just going to naturally kind of finally wake up and figure it out? Look, I think it's a little bit different uh, across the board. Historically, the gaming ecosystem, specifically within the, the, the mobile app world, has been more very, very heavily performance oriented. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, uh, the fragmented tech stacks have also prevented some of the, the movement into the particular space. We're now seeing that being bridged. Um, and frankly, I think just the appreciation for the consumer time and attention in that environment uh, hasn't really been as, as well thought of until we've started to see how blossoming the gaming economy ultimately looks like. And the gaming yeah. economy is just another phase of the consumer economy and yeah. a great opportunity for brands. Um, as we wrap up here, I want to talk about the CES theme, which is this year and last year, human security for all, how technology helps people live better lives. Does that resonate with you as a company, and what are you thinking about there? Absolutely. Look, at the core of what Comscore does, it's about representativeness. 
and, and we've done some fantastic work with the ANA to create planning tools that allow for uh, uh, underrepresented um, uh, you know, parts of our consumer demographic to be able to be planned and bought against mm -hmm. and measured uh, in, you know, in, in effective ways. So for us, you know, the core of, of any good media strategy takes in the factor of representatives of the consumer demographics and the consumer base. Uh, you know, minority factors, gender factors, all these different factors that need to play into it. We're highly committed to continuing to support that. I think it's a fantastic opportunity. We've seen wonderful uh, you know, movement from the market, but I think that's what it comes down to when you think about Comscore in this capacity. Well, thank you for the opportunity to chat once again here in the C-Space studio, Steve Bagdasari and Comscore. Really appreciate you coming back. Always a pleasure, thank you. Hope you come back again, and we hope you come back for more conversations here in the C-Space studio. I'm James Kotecki, we are at CES 2024. Don't go anywhere.